I'll give you guys a second to get into this room while I finish getting mic'd up here. Starting 30 seconds, just finishing getting mic'd up while you guys get a chance to get into the room. All right, so we are all set up. Give me a thumbs up there. Give me a sign that you can hear me clearly on this mic. I'm just going to pull you guys up here on the tablet, and we're going to get rolling, just so I can see you have any guys have any questions. All right, there we are. Oh, damn, that is one ugly, that is one ugly fool. All right, so I'm guessing you can hear me. No one's saying that they can't hear me. So we're gonna get started. This, this whole purpose of this broadcast is about recovery, soreness, but really about nutrition and your immune system because it's all the same thing. Getting sick, being tired all the time, even being lazy, even mentally sick or lazy, this is all part of what this is about. This all goes together, and to me, it's all from, the, from your immune system and all from your mindset, and that's what we're going to get into. So I don't get sick. I don't get tired. I don't, I mean, I'll get sore, but not really, because all these things are just a state of mind. This is all just a state of mind, and it's all you letting yourself do it, giving into it, and breaking down, and if you just ignore it and fight it and work through it, then you're usually going to be totally fine and much better. It's going to be much quicker recovery. And we're going to go into this from the aspect of training, from the aspect of out of training, and then from the aspect of nutrition. And we're going to start just on the training side. So say like soreness or being sick or whatever. Basically, when it comes down to it, this, this is all in your mind. It's all mindset. It's just having a little bit of toughness. It's having some discipline. And having to work through it when you're getting sore, especially in the beginning. That's why we did this right now, because I know a lot of people out there are starting their New Year's bullshit resolutions, and we want to make sure you stick to it, that you're not getting sore or discouraged or whatever, because it's hard and it's tough. It's all about having the right freaking mindset, being tough, being disciplined, and not quitting. And we'll get to you know get deep into all this in a second. And it's working through it when you're sore. So the staple of all that, the first foundation that we know of, obviously, is hydration. You want to be drinking a bottle of water, a minimum, with every one of your five to six small meals you have. And you should be having one of those small meals every two to three hours of the day. You should be having a bottle of water with each of those five to six small meals at a minimum. Then probably having a bottle of water when you wake up, bottle of water before you go to sleep, bottle of water before workout, during workout, after your workout. But that's going to be a minimum of six bottles of water. That's the bare, bare minimum when you're, especially when you're getting into a new training program, you want to be hydrated like crazy. So you need to just stay hydrated nonstop throughout the day. And we're talking about water. We're not talking about anything else. Even like other things you could have like plain seltzer or whatever, but we just want straight water. We don't want you having bubbles and burping and gassing and all this other shit. We want it strictly for the purpose of hydration to get into your muscles, get into your body and help you out with you know performance and recovery and it's also going to help out with you know digestion and all that other stuff in in when it comes to the nutrition side we're really talking about the training side right now so that's hydration then there's 
Warming up. How do you warm up the right way? The first step to warming up is showing up on fucking time. That's the first step of warming up correctly because you can't warm up correctly if you just come running in with all your bags and shit and you haven't done fi- finished training yet and you're supposed to be training at a certain time. And this is really for our members, but this is for anywhere, anywhere out in the world. This goes for you too. Don't just rush in and hop right into the workout. That's just not going to work. That's how you're going to end up being extra sore. You're going to not be able to work through the soreness that you already have. It's how you're going to get injured. You're going to pull something. Also not going to be able to go as hard as you can because you're going to start behind. You're going to be playing catch up the whole time. So if you jump right into a pretty hard exercise, you're pretty much going to kill almost your workout right then because you didn't properly warm up and build up to that. So you're going right to the hard stuff. Your legs are going to feel sore right away, especially if you were already sore before. You didn't kind of ease into it and work, work out. In the Marine Corps, if you were not 15 minutes early, you were late. And that's the same way it goes for a fucking class. You should be on time, and on time means 15 minutes early. 15 minutes early means you could start mentally, physically, emotionally, psychologically, pray to your God or whatever the, whatever the hell you got to do to get, to prepare for this session and make sure you're ready for it. So that means doing your own little stretching on your own, making sure whatever rituals you need to do, making sure you're hydrated, you have your, your pre-workout drink if you have one or whatever. We're going to get into that stuff in a second in the nutrition part. But this is not really about performance that we're talking about. This is about recovery and soreness. But that starts with the warm-up. That starts getting there on time and being prepared because then you're going to be able to ease yourself into that workout. Plus then you're there. You're already ready. You're already hydrated. You're ready to go. You've already done a little pre-warm-up on your own mentally and physically. So when it's time to start a training session, you're going to jump in there and you're going to do the actual warm-up with the group or with the team or whatever the hell it is you're doing. If you guys have any questions, you can put them right in here and I will answer them right as we're going. So how to warm up properly is showing up freaking early is the first step. Showing up on time, which means 15 minutes early. Then there's stretching, there's foam rolling. If you don't know how to do any of that, we have tons of videos. I'm sure we have them on YouTube. We could post some more here on Facebook in the comments. The, the stretch straps, we use stretch straps and we foam roll. Foam rolling is like, is like king. It's like God. I, I foam roll. I have a foam roller in my car at every gym, obviously. At home, I have a foam roller upstairs in my house, downstairs. Everywhere, anywhere that I'm going to be, that I ever might be, I have a foam roller. When I travel, I have little small foam rollers or I'll bring a little, they have like a little ball foam roller. They have the little one foot foam rollers I'll put in my luggage or a ball foam roller I'll put in my backpack when I'm traveling. I will always be rolling all the time from head to freaking toe. I'll do it several times a day. You need it. It's going to, it's going to get, get that soft tissue work, get nutrients in there to help you with recovery. It's going to help you with performance also, but we're really talking about recovery today. Then after the, after the workout, obviously, you need to also do some stretching and maybe foam rolling again if you need to. Learn how to do it. Ask one of your trainers how to do it, how to stretch and foam roll, and they'll show you the proper way and the even specific order to do stuff in that works the best and is most efficient. Then you need to worry about rest, recovery, and sleep. You should not be training seven days a freaking week. Our program specifically is designed, I'd say the sweet spot is four to five times a week. You can get away with three times a week. really depends on what your goals are or what your fitness level is. But four to five times a week is a sweet spot. You're feeling good. You could bump that up and add an extra day. And you should not be working out. You should not be training, especially in our intent. The intense shit we're doing, you should not be doing seven days a week. I myself couldn't do that shit seven days a week. If, if you are, that means you have to be holding back and you're overdoing it. You're going to end up being sore, overuse injuries, or you're going to get too hungry from training too much, especially if you're doing double sessions. You definitely shouldn't be doing that. That's going to really create you to be sore. Especially in the beginning, if you're just starting off a program at this time, you should not be doing double sessions. You shouldn't be doing seven days a week. It's four to five times a week, one session. It's one hour. It's high intensity. So you can't handle I couldn't handle that. I couldn't handle seven days a week or two times in, in, these, in our gym. Are you, are you freaking crazy? Because I'm going hard and I'm going all out. So if you do all that, that's going to cause you to be extra sore, cause you not to be able to recover, and cause you not to get the most out of the next workout. So your recovery is going to be screwed up by not giving yourself enough time in between workouts or doing too much of workouts at once. And then obviously sleep. Sleep's always been my biggest downfall in my own health and fitness. And I don't get enough of it. And I try to make that every, every month. I try to increase that and make it a little better. I used to literally average, if I was getting three hours of sleep a night, four hours max. That was like a full night of fucking sleep for me. And I try to change that. I try to make that more. I still get up early every single morning. I'll get up at 4 a.m., 5 a.m. if I'm sleeping in. And get my shit done that I need to do, get my shit together, get focused for my day, for my week, for my year, for my fucking life. But you need your sleep. So I start trying to make myself go to sleep a little earlier. Try to train, you know, you're starting to train your ass off. You should be ready. You should be able to go to sleep pretty early, but then still wake up early enough to schedule that magic time, get your shit done you need to do in the morning. All right. So that's the basic side on the, 
On the training side, very simple about how to avoid it. It's really a lot on the nutrition is mainly what a lot of people have questions about because if you come into the gym or you come into our gym at least, that shit is taken care of for you. From the second you walk in the door to the second you walk out, we're there, we're helping you out, taking care of you, but we cannot sit there with you in the kitchen 24 hours a fucking day and hold your hand and boot you in the ass when you're doing some shit you're not supposed to be doing. So that's why as in with dieting and losing weight, nutrition is the hardest part. Same with recovery and your immune system and doing things the way you're supposed to be doing. It's, it's also comes down to discipline and mindset on a regular basis. When it comes down to certain things with the nutrition, we're, we're talking about in, with supplementation. We're talking about different the way you're eating. But especially when you're cutting out certain things, like the way that we're eating during this weight loss challenge, especially, or the way that we're eating to really lean out or whatever, we limit a lot of things. We limit, limit a lot of things like fruits. So those fruits, we're going to lose some of the antioxidants and some of the nutrients that those fruits are getting. So you might need to add supplementation. But that's also why we go overboard on our freaking vegetables. So you need to go overboard on your vegetables. Eat as much as you want. The greener, the better. You're not going to get eat too many calories by eating too much vegetables. You do not even have to measure that shit out. Eat as much as you want. Like I always say, have you ever heard of someone getting fucking fat off of eating too much broccoli? No, you haven't. So you can eat as much as you want. You're going to get to the point where you get full before you get to the point where you had too many calories of a certain vegetable or whatever that you're, you're eating too much of. So go overboard the vegetables since we're limiting your fruits because you are losing some antioxidants. That's why you might need to go into some supplementation like we're going to go into. What keeps, but when we're talking about being sick, and sore, it's really exactly the same thing. It's all based pretty much on your immune system. And a lot of times they come together because your immune system has to recover, has to heal something one thing at a time, whether it's an injury, it's soreness or some sickness or virus that's coming into your body or something. It has to focus on one thing. So when it's focusing on one thing, so if you're over sore, that's a lot of time when people get sick is when they're over sore because now their immune system and all their body's energy and nutrients have to go to focus to fight that soreness. And guess what? Then it leaves you vulnerable to other shit. So the point is, you need to do this stuff on a regular basis. What's the saying that they have? Don't, don't close the door before all the goats have already run away. Or don't close the barn door before all the great, or after all the go- goats have run away. Whatever the hell that stupid ass saying is. Yeah, so you basically start feeling sick or you start feeling sore, so what do you do? Then you start taking your vitamin C. Oh my God, I need my vitamin C, or I need my little, whatever, chicken noodle soup or some shit. You should be eating healthy and nutritious, and you should be taking your vitamins and your antioxidants and everything to not be sick all the time, not just when you're sick. If you wait till when you're sick, it's too late. That shit's gonna barely, barely maybe make you not be sick for as long. But if you take it before, it's gonna, at first, at best, it's gonna prevent you from being sick or sore in the first place, but then... Second, it's going to make you not get as sick, as bad, or for as long. So it's going to cut down on the the length of the sickness and also the severity of it just by doing this all the time. Like my antioxidants, I'm going to go through the list of things that I take. I'm not telling you what to take. You obviously want to clear with yourself and your doctor and whatever else. I'm going to tell you all the different vitamins I take and the the different supplements and stuff I take that are all geared to our immune system. Because you know what? To me, a, a healthy immune system and a boosted immune system is a performance enhancer because I'm not sick, I'm not sore, I'm always full of energy, and that's because my immune system is on point. It's all about the immune system when it comes to performance, when it comes to soreness, when it comes to results. You need a strong immune system. And it starts with antioxidants. Who's here watching? Rosa, Rosa is here. If you guys have any questions about what we're going over, throw it out there and we'll answer it right here. So it starts with antioxidants. Antioxidant is basically... We're going to try not to get too scientific. We can try to keep it simple, straightforward for you. But it's a molecule that inhibits oxidation of other molecules. Basically, it's oxidation is a chemical reaction that can produce free radicals leading to you know, chain reactions that can cause all kinds of damage to cells leading to cancers and all kinds of stuff. So antioxidants pretty much fight that and kill that and go against that oxidation. That's why it's an antioxidant. So they protect the body from damage caused by the free radicals. You've heard some of this stuff before. I'm going to try not to get too scientific because I'm just a freaking a trainer, right? So I can't be that smart. So I'm just not going to babble too much. But many, many people believe and experts believe and a lot of studies have shown, you know, that the, the, the damage that can happen in, in these, from these, from the oxidation can cause all kinds of cancers and arthrosclerosis and all kinds of other other conditions so we want antioxidants to fight that to combat that so what kind of stuff does that mean we're going to go into what kind of supplements and what kind of things you need especially at times when you're on a low caloric intake for an uh, extended amount of time and you're limiting things like your fruits 
and stuff like that because a lot of this, a lot of these antioxidants come in foods that unfortunately don't help us lose weight. So it's like, okay, I'm going to be healthy, but I'm not going to be able to lose weight and get rid of all this excess fat that I have. So we're going to start with just basics. My number one big secret of what I do for my immune system, I'm not telling you yet. You're going to have to wait for that. It's a supplement. It's cheap. It's so simple. It's like decades and decades old that not many people use or really even talk about, especially in like the weight loss field or just the general population. I'm going to get to that in a second. I'm not going to tell you yet. That is my number one secret supplement. Some of you might know about it. See if anyone can guess what my number one secret supplement is. Very cheap, very simple, totally, totally like clean and natural. If anyone can guess what the number one secret supplement is for my own, I'll just, whatever, my own recovery process. So anyway, we'll get to that in a second. But BCAAs are another one. BCAAs are not it, which someone was probably about to say. But your BCAAs, your branched chain amino acids, are not what I was talking about. There is something else. So when you're dieting down, you're trying to get lean, you're trying to get shredded, it's going to definitely shave off some of your muscles. It's going to, you're going to lose some muscle is what you're going to do. So what BCAAs, branched chain amino acids are going to do, are going to help protect your muscles against the catabolic effect of dieting. Catabolic effect means you're eating muscle, your muscle breakdown, because you don't have enough food or fuel or the protein's not getting put into, back into your body at a quick enough pace or at an efficient enough pace. So basically the leaner the, leaner the body gets, the more likely you are to lose muscle mass because the body's using that as fuel because you're on a low calorie intake. That's why we, when we lower down our carbs and our fat, we always bump up our protein, right? But we also want our BCAAs to prevent the muscle loss and increase protein synthesis, which is getting it back into the muscles repairing. See if anyone can guess, what is my number one? Number one go-to immune system booster, recovery booster. Who can tell me what it is? A supplement. And it's not even an Herbalife supplement. I'm going to get Herbalife supplements in a second because there are a few that I use regularly, but I'll get to those in a second. So BCAAs are reducing the rate of protein breakdown. BCAAs reduce the amount of, actually they fight tryptophan. You know that shit you always hear on, on, on freaking Thanksgiving, the tryptophan and the turkey or whatever that shit. That's there all the time. You don't even realize it. And BCAAs actually combat that and fight it so it doesn't enter into the brain and lowers levels of serotonin that are produced. So that's going to make you also, BCAs are going to help you be even a workout booster because it's going to combat that, fight that, decrease that, make your workout harder and longer. So I don't only use BCAAs. I'll use usually a full serving of BCAAs right after my workout with my post-workout drink, but I'll also use sometimes a half a serving of BCAAs with my pre-workout drink, which I'll get into the other things I put into that pre-workout drink in a second. So let's go. I'm not going to tell you my number one secret yet, but let's go into vitamins next. And then we're going to go from vitamins, then into the Herbalife supplements. And then from there into my number one secret. So different vitamins that that you're going to go with. There's all the different, and I take these vitamins every single day. I'm just telling you what I do. Obviously check with your your doctor. I'm pretty sure they won't have a problem with you supplementing with any of this stuff because for the most part, if you're training your ass off, you have a busy day, you're running around all over the place, you know, there's people out there sick and coughing and spitting and getting their fucking snots all over you and shit. You have kids bringing home God knows what from the other kids in their school. You need an extra barrier, an extra shield to make yourself freaking bulletproof against all that nasty shit that's out there. So I just use basic supplements, over the counter, like store little supplements of these basics. I'll use a couple of different B vitamins, mainly. B6 and B12, and you can find them in different places. But the problem with some of these vitamins in the types of foods you can get in, you don't get enough. That's why we also supplement with them. So B6 is needed for, it's, an, it's basically a part of an enzyme that is needed for protein metabolism, and it helps make red blood cells. So obviously that sounds pretty damn good to me. I don't know, I'm not a fucking scientist, but that shit sounds good to me. That's B6. I take that all the time. That's in meat and fish, some, some chicken, and vegetables and fruits. So you're going to get some B6, but probably not to the levels that you really want to combat and armor. So I do take a B6 vitamin or B6, whatever, you know, little tablet. Usually I take most of this stuff twice a day because I need to fight that shit. I don't have time for being sick. I'm not going to get sick. First, you need to mentally fight that shit, but then I'm also physically fighting that shit. So... Oh, Rose says, just going out to get this stuff. Well, you're going to have a shopping list when we're done because there's B6 we started with. 
Then we have folic acid. Folic acid is needed for making DNA and new cells, especially in red blood cells also. That's in your leafy green vegetables. Usually you're probably going to get enough folic acid, so you don't have to take it, but that is one that some people might need a little extra of, but it's also in oranges and if you're in nasty-ass liver and some grains. But we know we're not having grains. We don't know we're not having any fruits. So it is in some leafy green vegetables. If you're getting enough of those, then you're probably fine with folic acid if you're eating as much vegetables as you should be. But just so you know. Another one is vitamin B12. Is again, it's an enzyme needed for making new cells and it's important for nerve function. So the Bs that I usually go with are 6 and 12. That's the ones that I like. And again, that's in your meat and fish and poultry, eggs, but also in milk. We know we're also not having milk or dairy. It's in a lot of dairy stuff. It's not in any really in plants, but it is in a lot of milk, milk stuff, milk products. So that's B12. Then, of course, you all know it, vitamin C. You get sick, you're like on your fucking deathbed, and you start saying, oh my God, I got to start taking vitamin C. Guess what, dumbass? It's too late. You waited too long. I take a minimum of 2,000 milligrams of vitamin C. And if you know that with the like recommended daily allowances of those, the bullshit, that stuff is useless. That's like the recommended daily allowance is if you were just sitting on your freaking couch doing jack shit all day just for you to live and survive and, and basically not die. That's the amount that the recommended daily allowance is. The second you start moving, and especially if you're active, you're a peak freak and you're going crazy in boot camp and boxing classes and you're training and working hard and you have a busy life, you need to bump that shit up from whatever the RDA tells you. Fuck, fuck that. Fuck the RDA. So vitamin C. Don't wait until you're sick for vitamin C. I have vitamin C twice a day, every single day, seven days a week, no matter what. It's a huge antioxidant. It's huge for boosting your immune system and it aids in iron absorption. It's, like I said, boosts your immune system. It's also needed for protein metabolism. So it's like vitamin C is like, bam. It's like if there's one freaking thing, vitamin I was going to ever, can only choose, it's going to be vitamin C. That's like the god of, of freaking vitamins. So go with vitamin C. Go with all these if you can. They're, if you get a bottle at like the store, you get the natural ones. They're like, they're cheap. You can go to Matter of Health in Nanuet or wherever. You can, you can get the stuff online, Amazon. You can even get the stuff in, in like Walgreens or whatever. The grocery store has all this stuff. And they're cheap. Three, three, three dollars a bottle for some of them. That's going to last you at, at least like a month. Some of them two months. Some of them have like a hundred, hundred capsules in there, whatever. Some 200, 250. Shit's cheap. It's going to, it's going to last you a long time. So it's not like it's, it's very expensive. So those that we were just saying were water soluble uh, vitamins. Then there's also fat soluble vitamins that we're going to go over, which are vitamin A, vitamin D, and E are the ones that I go with. Most people don't get enough vitamin D because we don't have enough sun, especially here in New York with this shit outside, this shithole out there freezing your ass off, you're not getting enough sun, especially in the summertime, or sorry, whatever, the wintertime, you're not getting enough freaking, there's no vitamin D. Vitamin D is in the egg yolks, which we're not having. It's in fatty fish, which we know we shouldn't have. It's in milks, which we shouldn't have. So when you're on our type of program, you most likely need to supplement with vitamin D. So that's another huge one you need to mix in there, and that's one of the, on the fat soluble side, vitamin D. Then also there's vitamin E and vitamin A. These are both antioxidants for boosting your immune system, They eat all kinds of, you know, vitamin E and A. They both work for healthy skin. I need a sip of water. (coughs) That's going to be all worked up talking about this stuff. So, let's see. So, yeah, vitamin A, D, and E are really the main ones you need to look at there for boosting your immune system. Vitamin E is, is protecting all your cell walls and all kinds of stuff like that. One second. <coughs> all right, so that's the vitamin side. Cheap, like a couple dollars a bottle, literally a couple dollars a bottle for over a freaking month's worth of those. So next we're going to what Herbalife supplements do I use on a regular basis to combat soreness, fatigue, and mainly to boost my immune system. So this one is one that I only do add once you start feeling people's germs start to invade you. And you know when you get that little scratch in your throat or that little feeling you start doing it, there's a product from Herbalife called Best Defense. It has vitamin C, has echinacea, however the hell you say that, has zinc, it's all about, it's, it's all kinds of antioxidants mixed together. It's a little fizzle capsule you put into water, fizzes out, and it's gonna stimulate your cellular immune defense on a cellular level it's freaking awesome. 
One I use every single day right before you go to sleep. It's called Restore from Herbalife, from the 24, the athlete line, 24 line. Restore. It is awesome. I do not go to sleep without having my Restore. I can't sleep if I don't have my Restore because I know that shit is going to work for me in my sleep. It, it basically combats exercise-induced inflammation, which a lot of you freaks are having right now after doing starting off these programs. It's got turmeric, elderberry, which are extracts from fruits, those scavenged free radicals that we were talking about before. So it has a huge antioxidant effect. It has, also has vitamin C, vitamin A in small amounts, in very small amounts, but it still mixes together to make a huge, powerful concoction. And turmeric. Turmeric is in there also. And curcumin is in there, which helps combat exercise-induced inflammation. Awesome, powerful, restore. I do not go to sleep without taking my Herbalife Restore. So you need to check that shit out. How do we... <coughs> now I'm coughing. We're talking about being sick and I start freaking coughing. Started choking on my own spit, talking so much. <coughs> Alright, whatever. Rosa asks, how about if we're taking a multivitamin? Do we still need to take these in addition on top of? The answer is prob- almost guaranteed yes. Most multivitamins, they'll have what that RDA amount is. So say... Vitamin C, whatever the hell the RDA is, like 45 milligrams or something, when you need to be taking 500 milligrams or 1,000 milligrams to really get the effect of boosting your immune system. So multivitamins, unless it's like a super one, like a super food type of multivitamin thing where you're taking like these huge three or four horse pills for one serving or something like that, most likely the multivitamin has a bare minimum for each one, which is the lowest levels you need. So it's not going to cut it. You almost... Can tra- you can take that multivitamin also just to make sure you're covering your bases of something you're not taking specifically. But these ones that I'm naming, you need to take separately because your multivitamin is not going to cover them on this level. Multivitamin is giving you like 100% of the RDA of each one of these things. When you take, uh, say, a vitamin C of 1,000 milligrams on its own, that's something like 1,333% of our RDA or some shit like that or 2,000 or 3,000%. So uh, you, in general, multivitamin is not going to cut it. All right, back to the... Herbalife supplements. So, so far for Herbalife supplements, we had Best Defense, which is when you do feel like you need a little boost in your immune system. Restore is every night, right before I go to sleep. Literally, it, it recovers you while you're sleeping and it, it combats exercise-induced inflammation. Then Cell Activator. I use this every single day also, a couple times a day. It helps regenerate antioxidant activity with, within your cells, deep inside your cells, and supports the body's absorption of micronutrients, which helps keep you recovered helps keep you functioning the way you need to be but also on a different level because we also know we need to perform we need to be some ass kickers we need to kick some fucking ass over there in the boot camp classes so that's what it's doing for you this stuff all combined is what the secrets are that i have then the herbalife green the teas they all have green teas i call them green teas even the raspberry peach or whatever they all have our green tea and they also have the what's that thing called orange pico or however the hell you pronounce it which is also has a huge antioxidant effect. So other than giving you energy and boosting your metabolism with those with those herbal teas from Herbalife, they are huge antioxidants. Green tea is a huge antioxidant. So all this stuff mixed combined. So that's the kind of stuff that I would put in my pre-workout drink is this last thing that I'm about to tell you and mix with my Herbalife green tea. I'll mix with that best defense when I need to. And then there's a lift off, which is also a, that's not really necessary with the immune system, that's more just caffeine and performance. I'm not really talking about that. But Herbalife Green Tea goes perfect with your, your pre-workout, but it's also it's going to give you energy, boost your metabolism, but also giving you an antioxidant effect. And then I mix it with the beverage drink mix because that's just easy, low-carb, low-sugar way to make sure you're getting in protein. Easily digestible. It's like juice. The Herbalife, that's like the god of the Herbalife supplements right there. That and the, and the, and the tea together. Forget it. And then you take the, when I, when I take the, you know, the cell activator with it during the day and restore it before I go to sleep. It's like, bam, mix with the other vitamins I'm talking about. And then what is the number one? Food me joined us. Steve Owen joined us. What is our number one big secret supplement? It's like dirt cheap. You get like a month and a half, two months worth for like 15, 17 bucks over at Vitamin Shop. Half the time they have it. Buy one, get one half off when they do this, the sale. I just get the store brand one. It works. It has nothing artificial in there or whatever. It's, it's totally plain and clear. I get buy one, get one half off. Plus, you know, if you're a peak freak, 
over at Vitamin Shop, you get an extra 10% off over there. So make sure you go over there. The Nanuet Vitamin Shop, we, we have an awesome relationship with the, with the Vitamin Shop over Nanuet. And the Suffering Peak Physique, we have a great relationship with the Vitamin Shop right next door in New Jersey in Ramsey. So you go over there, you get 10%. Actually, the Vitamin Shop Ramsey is going to be in the Suffering location tonight. I think at 5 p.m. from 5 to 8.15, there's going to be samples in the gym from the Ramsey Vitamin Shop over in the Suffering location. So go by, check it out, get some, some stuff from them. Probably bringing some of this stuff. So my number one secret supplement that keeps you bulletproof, keeps you not being sick. I take it twice a day on training days, once a day, not on training days. And if I'm getting sick, I'll take it usually three or four times a day. It's in a powder form. It is glutamine. Not many people talk about glutamine because it's not the big fancy, you know, shiny thing that people have out there. It's been around for so long, been around for decades. It's just a plain white powder. You should see when I travel and they search through my fucking luggage at the airport because I get searched every time I go in the airport. I can't figure why. And I have all my travel shit with me and I make sure I bring my supplements on, on my carry-on because I don't want that shit. To, what if I lose, what if I lose my, 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 they lose my luggage and I'm screwed. I need, I need to have this shit because I need to stay bulletproof. I need to stay full of energy so I can fucking perform for you guys. So glutamine is the number one. So many studies have been, been done on glutamine over the last like 30, 40, 50 years. It's a, it's a hugely studied supplement. And again, I'm just telling you what I use. You figure out what's going to work for you. You talk to your doctor, whatever you need to do. Just saying. Anyway, this, this supplement of glutamine is going to minimize the breakdown of muscle and it's going to improve protein metabolism. It minimizes the breakdown of muscle and improve protein t- metabolism. Like, bam. Doesn't really get any better than that. Basically, when your muscle tissue is being built or repaired, l- like even after a workout or after being sick or an injury or something like that, even severe illness, glutamine is like essential. You need that shit. It will, and I use it all year round. So first of all, it's keeping you strong when all those nasty ass fuckers germs all around you. I don't even care. I know I'm not going to get sick. I don't care when I'm around sick people. And guess what? If I start feeling that stuff penetrate me, I'm going to boost up some of these supplements. I'm going to still work out. I'm going to sweat that shit out of my system. I'm not going to slow down. I'm going to have the, I'm going to operate with the same energy and intensity because you know what? That shit's not going to beat me. I'm going to ignore it. And then before you know it, that little scratchy throat or other fuck is coming along is going to be gone. I'm not going to accept it. It's a state of mind and I'm just going to fucking fight through it. That's what I'm going to do. But anyway, glutamine, like during, during like intense training levels or sorry, during like intense training, glutamine is like great, is depleted from your body. And which is going to make you decrease its strength level, decrease your, your stamina and your recovery. So you need to constantly, regularly, that's why I take it even on off days. Because if your glutamine levels go too low, it could take like almost up to a week to get back up to normal. So, and it's a huge role in protein synthesis and recovery. So I take that, I take it every single day, whether I'm training or not, twice a day on training days. And that's just one teaspoon mixed with my pre-workout drink, one teaspoon with my post-workout drink right there. Boom. You feel some nasty sickness coming on, you take it. Or you're a little extra sore, take another one before you go to sleep with with your Herbalife Restore. You need, I mean, that's the the combination. So that's basically, I'm going to give you a quick breakdown again from the training side. So anyone there with any questions? So quick breakdown on the training side, we said Get, first, it's, before anything, is get your freaking mind right. Everything starts here. No matter what, you can't do shit in life without this. You can't get through soreness. You can't get weight loss. You can't be achieve success in anything you do without the right fucking tough mindset. So you need to be tough, be disciplined. You need to be able to work through it. So it starts with hydration. It starts with showing up on time for your training sessions, warming up properly, stretching, foam rolling, and then rest, recovery, and sleep, and not overtraining and doing too much. Then we went into antioxidants. Then we went into, we talked about the Herbalife supplements, which were best defense if you're feeling sick, the Restore right before I go to sleep, Cell Activator a couple times a day, and the, the herbal, herbal Green Tea a couple times a day, twice a day. Then there's Glutamine, which is like the ultimate in recovery and repair of your muscles. Glutamine, BCAAs, branched chain amino acids. Then on the vitamin side, we had vitamin A, vitamin B6, B12, C, and then vitamin E, which was our main ones. Oh, and I forgot there's, I also take a calcium, magnesium, zinc combo, which helps also. And this stuff I don't take only if I'm feeling sick. I take it every day because guess what? If you're training hard, every day you technically are freaking sick. It's the same shit. Soreness, 
is the same as sickness, is the same as a cold, because your body's breaking down. Your body sees it as sick, so your immune system has to go and attack it. So the stronger your immune system is, the less you're going to get sore, the faster you're going to recover, which means the harder you're going to be able to work out, which means the more accelerated your results are going to be. So that's everything it's going to take to do it. And I do this stuff on a daily fucking basis, seven days a week, no matter what. And it keeps me performing at optimal levels like I am. So this is the, all the secrets to having a bulletproof immune system and to just keep attacking nonstop, dominate your day, dominate your fitness results, dominate your fucking life. If you have any questions, you can put them down in the comments. I see nothing left. There are questions. Put them in the comments. I'll get to them after. If not, don't forget, tonight's Thursday night. There is a free boxing session at the Nanuet and Suffer location, 6.15 p.m. And again, in the Suffer location, the Ramsey Vitamin Shop is going to be over from 5.15 till 8.15. I think they're going to be there for all three sessions. They are for, where they're going to have samples of supplements and stuff like that. Ira from over there is an awesome dude. He's going to come there and give out some supplements in the Suffer location. Rosa asked him going back to the Tuesday videos. Yes, we're going to get back into that. Now that things have calmed down a little bit, we are going to get back into the usual Steve Says. We have a whole lineup of Steve Says. That's every Tuesday at 2.15 p.m. Steve Says videos. There's a backlog of 35, 36 episodes. If you haven't watched Steve Says, if you're new to the Peak Physique freaking circle and, and family, you need to go back and check that. I'll start reposting some of those regularly so you can catch up. Some of them are on YouTube. Some of them you can find here on Facebook if you search. There's Steve Says. There goes from episode one all the way to 35. So check those out. So again, don't forget, free boxing tonight, completely free. Don't forget, completely freaking free. Manuet and Suffering, 615 every single Thursday night, free every single week. All right, any questions, put them in there. I'll comment later. Talk to you guys later.